Uh, and now let's look at some forces. And I'll just show you the vertical forces. And um, so these are the vertical forces over time from multiple steps that we calculate for these, uh, for these Capuchin superimposed. And for compare, uh, comparative pur purposes, this is the vertical force curve that humans uh, typically produce when they walk. And has two distinct peaks, uh, one early during the stand and the other one later during the stand. So these are single limb contacts, you know, just one foot from, from heel strike to toe off and one foot from, from uh, not heel strike, but four foot strike to, to toe off. Uh, the first peak uh, has to do with the, uh, 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 with the hip drop that, that would result in when you take your one foot off the ground, my <coughs> one foot off the ground, my center of mass, you know, is, is going to pull me over to that side, and we don't allow this. We we, we don't walk like this, uh, uh, but we use kind of muscles on the other side and straighten out the hip, so we, we break this downward uh, impulse or uh, downward force by just pushing pushing against it using using the muscles at the hip, and that causes this first peak. The second peak is an, an, is an active propulsion, so we can, as, as we can move into the second half of the stance, we actively push forward with the plantar flexes in the, in the, in the back of the, the leg to propel us into, into the next step. And Capuchins don't have these two peaks. Most of these uh, forces have just one peak only. Some of them have maybe something that looks like an incipient you know, two-peak uh, force curve. But I mean, in, in essence, these are these are very different from what we see in humans. So, so the the, the, the kinetics of of the uh, capuchin by period gate is also is also very different. They they don't they they, oops, they don't they don't push off actively during the second half of stance, and, and they seem to do something different with their hip as well. And I get back to that in a minute. Okay, so. I told you that one of the purposes to collect force data is to get to these calculations on the center of mass, the uh, energy and energy, potential energy exchanges. And uh, from Giovanni Cavagna and other researchers, we know that um, uh, during human walking, we have, especially at intermediate speeds, we have very high recovery rates. So there's a very high exchange between potential and uh, kinetic energy. Uh, up to 65, almost uh, 70 percent here, and as we uh, as we start walking faster and approach running speed, that recovery rate uh, drops dramatically, and that has to do with the fact that the uh, potential and kinetic energy fluctuate in phase. But during kind of intermediate walking speeds, you see that the that the potential energy peaks as the kinetic energy is a is, is at a minimum and mm -hmm. vice versa. So very low congruity in human walking. And now let's look at the Capuchin data. So this is percent mechanical uh, energy recovery as a function of speed. And you see that the highest values are some, somewhere at, at about 20% or so. And most of these values are much lower. So on average, they are maybe kind of, you know, uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are even below 10%. And that has to do with the fact that the kinetic and potential energies in capuchin uh, bipedalism, they fluctuate pretty much in phase. So we have very high congruity values here, up to up to uh, 90 90 percent here, on average uh, 80 percent. So so that's very different from what we see in human walking. And so so. So what we can, can say right now is that capuchin aren't, capuchins aren't rolling eggs. Uh, so then the, 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 the second question is, is do, do they really walk by pedally? Do they kind of you know, use this kind of, uh, 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 they obviously don't use this pendulum mechanics. So is, is their gait and walk? And there are two ways of, uh, of, of kind of defining a walking gait. And one is, you know, how much how much energy do you recover if energy is, recovery is high? It's, it's a, in, in dynamic terms, it's a walking gait. If it's low, if spring mechanisms are involved, it's called a running gait. 
But there's also a kinematic definition of walking and running, and we, over the last few years, we have learned more and more that these two are not necessarily kind of uh, the same. So there are some intermediate gates that are uh, kinematically or uh, kinetically running gate, gates, but uh, that they might be kind of walking gates uh, using the other definition. So let's look at the Dooley factor. So this is, you know, tells you whether the gate has an area of face which, which make it kinematically a running gate. And, and everything below 0.5 would, would have an area of face, would be a run. Capucci, they are sitting right on the fence here. And you see that some of their, 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 their steps have, have two defectors that are below 0.5, so they have a short area of face. So they are, uh, by that definition, they are runs. And there is another way of, of defining uh, walks and runs using a, a dimensionless number that is often used in gate analysis, the food number. And the beauty of a food number is actually it allows you to better compare organisms that are quite different in size, like humans and capuchin monkeys. And we know from empirical studies that humans and actually um, also other quadrupeds, they, they change from, from walking gates to running gates at a food, at a food number of 0 0.5. But Peter Capuchins, again, they are on the fence at 0.47. And you see that some, some of these uh, food numbers kind of, they, they go far into, into the running territory. So again, we have an intermediate gate here, and a lot of these fastest steps that Capuchin monkeys use are are not really are not really uh, walking walking steps, not by by uh, dynamic criteria. The rolling egg you know, doesn't work, but also not by by uh, by kinematic by just the sheer movement criteria. Um, the uh, let's put the capuchin bipedalism in the, to the context of a quadrupedal gates. So the, the, these are the gates that they, they use uh, more frequently. Their, their bipedal gates are, are actually only reserved to these situations where they have to carry around something, or kind of sometimes you know, to get a better view of, of you know the, maybe the bad guy coming for them. Um, and and so this is what they do in everyday business. They they have walking and running gates. And they also can gallop, and, and for now let's exclude the gallops. We have nothing that is uh, comparable to a gallop in, in humans. Uh, and, and, and if you look at this category here, uh, we, what we find is that uh, Capuchin uh, quadrupedalism is also a borderline game where you know, some, some of the slowest uh, steps are, uh, are clearly walks where, where, all, where one, one limb or a pair of limbs is, is at minimum is on the ground. But some of them, as they get faster, you know, you see there's no limb on the ground. They have a short area face, so they 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 are by 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 any definition they are running gates, and like the bipedal gates, uh, the the limbs as they as they go from from the touchdown as they go from touchdown, which is fairly extended, to uh, to mid stance here. This the side limb is in mid stance. They 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 yield, so they become compliant. And form uh, and the, the elbow and, and knee collapse into flexion, and and the knee, you know, which is uh, the the one that we compare to bipedalism, actually changes by kind of the knee angle reduces uh, uh, from from touchdown to uh, to mid stance by by 40 degrees, which is quite a bit. So they collapse quite a bit into flexion in their quadrupedal gaits as well. Um, so, so let's look now at mechanical energy recovery again. And these are the bipedal data that I showed you before. So they are, they are kind of bridging the, 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 the walk run transition here. And their, their percent recovery is, is fairly low, kind of 10% uh, or, or even below 10%. Uh, and for the walks I showed you, I mean, they, they also seem to collapse into into uh, flexion uh, during stands, so which would kind of uh, not suggest that they kind of use the rolling egg mechanism, but nevertheless, I mean, it's highly variable. They they gain higher recovery uh, percentages than than any of the bipedal steps here, and only as as the speeds go up and they approach gallops, these recovery rates actually go down, and you see that the walks like the 